Mr. Beat presents Supreme Court Briefs. Am I a masochist? Based on just these five seconds that you saw, answer me this. What sounds worse? Watching the rest of this video or hitting yourself in the face with the two by four? Let's talk aesthetics. Hey boyses and girlses, we gotta talk about most Supreme Court case. But don't y'all worry, I'm talking a funny voice. Also, underwear, yuck yuck. Am I being too hard on Mr. Beat as me? Are you thinking he's just trying to entertain his audience of children? Except as we'll soon find out, this video is actually about condoms and pregnancy. And I'm sure it's that exact reason that he's aiming it at children. New Haven, Connecticut, November 1961, Griswold. No, not that Griswold. Estelle Griswold and Dr. C. Lee Buxton open a clinic where they give advice and resources to married couples in order to help them avoid getting pregnant. They also prescribed contraceptives or birth control for married women. Well, this got them in trouble. Local authorities arrested them for breaking a law that prohibited anyone from using, quote, any drug, medicinal article, or instrument for the purpose of preventing conception. Yep, Connecticut straight up banned and using birth control. With the help of P.T. Barnum, apparently, the state passed the law way back in 1879. A law against birth control? Oh, you do jest, my good man. It must have been a total clown world back then. Look, the law was even supported by P.T. Barnum, a literal circus man. Stupid, stupid Christians. If only they knew how better off we have it today, with all of this sexual liberation. Well, Griswold and Buxton, as well as many others, thought the law banning birth control was wrong. After they were found guilty for breaking it and fined $100 each, they appealed to the appellate division of the circuit court. Griswold and Buxton argued that banning birth control went against the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Remember when Stephen Colbert asked that congressman to name the Ten Commandments and then he couldn't do it, even though he said he cared deeply about a monument to them? Yeah, that was pretty funny. I'd say the highlight of Colbert's career. From then on, it's been all downhill. Mr. Beats is me, can you actually tell me what's in the 14th Amendment? Well, let's find out. Amendment number 14, section 1. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Section 2. Representatives shall be apportioned among the several states according to their respective numbers, counting the whole number of persons in each state, excluding Indians not taxed. But when the right to vote at any election for the choice of electors for President and Vice President of the United States, representatives in Congress, the executive and judicial officers of the state, or the members of the legislature thereof, is denied to any of the male inhabitants of such state, being 21 years of age, and citizens of the United States, or in any way abridged, except for participation in rebellion or other crime, the basis of representation therein shall be reduced in the proportion which the number of such male citizens shall bear to the whole number of male citizens 21 years of age in such state. Section 3. No person shall be a senator or representative in Congress, or elector of President and Vice President, or hold any office, civil or military, under the United States, or under any state, who, having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress, or as an officer of the United States, or as a member of any state legislature, or as an executive or judicial officer of any state, to support the Constitution of the United States, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same, or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. But Congress may, by a vote of two-thirds of each house, remove such a disability. Section 4. The validity of the public debt of the United States, authorized by law, including debts incurred for payment of pensions and bounties for services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion, shall not be questioned. But neither the United States nor any state shall assume or pay any debt or obligation incurred in aid of insurrection or rebellion against the United States, or any claim for the loss or emancipation of any slave. But all such debts, obligations, and claims shall be held illegal and void. Section 5. The Congress shall have the power to enforce, by appropriate legislation, the provisions of this article. I didn't hear anything about birth control. Pregnancy wasn't mentioned either. What I did hear is that no state shall deprive anyone of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Well, the appellate division of the circuit courts disagreed and upheld their conviction, so Griswold and Buxton appealed again, this time to the Connecticut Supreme Court, who, uh, yeah, also upheld it. Okay, well, we looked at the text already. Clearly, it doesn't mention pregnancy your birth control. So far, two courts have reached the same common sense conclusion. Why would you keep appealing the case at that point? Isn't it obvious that you're pushing a frivolous legal argument? Seems to me Griswold knows something that we don't. The actual law doesn't matter if the system's rigged at the top. 
So Griswold and Buxton appealed again, this time to the U.S. Supreme Court. The Supreme Court agreed to hear arguments on March 29th and 30th, 1965. The lawyer representing Griswold and Buxton was Catherine Rohrabach, who claimed that the birth control ban violated the right to marital privacy guaranteed by the Bill of Rights. Does marital appear at all in the Bill of Rights? It's false. What about marriage? Not this time. Is the word privacy even mentions. Now the word privacy does not uh, appear anywhere in the constitution. Okay, that would make their argument frivolous. In fact, it isn't supported by anything in the Bill of Rights. They're literally just making this stuff up. However, there was that sneaky Ninth Amendment, which essentially said that there were other rights we all had not specifically listed in the Constitution. But throughout American history, nobody seemed to give a crap about the Ninth Amendment. Well, prior to this terrible decision, our country had existed for around 200 years. Yet no one had ever cited to the Ninth Amendment before to come up with fake BS constitutional rights. Why is that? Could it be that Mr. Beats is me has no idea what he's talking about? After all, he's not a lawyer. He's a social studies teacher. The U.S. federal government has enumerated powers. That means it can only do the things that the Constitution says it can do. Anything else is reserved to the states. The states have broad police powers which allow them to do pretty much anything. For example, the federal government passed the Violence Against Women Act. It made domestic violence a federal crime. Yet, nothing in the Constitution allowed the federal government to do this. So unsurprisingly, it was found unconstitutional. State domestic violence laws, on the other hand, are entirely fine. The Bill of Rights was originally intended to apply only to the federal government. State governments had no obligation to honor things such as, for example, the First Amendment. This changed after the Civil War. The Supreme Court interpreted the new 14th Amendment to apply the Federal Bill of Rights to the states. Prior to this 14th Amendment, states could give their citizens either less or more rights. Some states gave the people more rights, some gave them less. After the 14th Amendment, states had to give, at the bare minimum, the same rights that the federal government gave the people. However, states still can and do give their citizens additional constitutional rights not in the Federal Bill of Rights. Let's talk about the Ninth Amendment. The Ninth Amendment simply states that the enumeration of certain rights in the U.S. Constitution doesn't prohibit the states from granting additional rights to their citizens. If you think about it, this makes a lot of sense. When coming up with the Bill of Rights, there were probably a lot of people who thought additional rights should be put in there. For the rights that they didn't agree on, they created the Ninth Amendment. Just because the right you supported didn't make it into the Bill of Rights doesn't mean that you can't still make it a right under your state constitution. The Ninth Amendment was never intended to allow the Supreme Court to make fake rights out of thin air. That would defeat the entire purpose of living in a democratic country. The British Empire used a common law legal system. Under that system, it was the judges who created the law. They did so by citing the judicial precedents based on Anglo-Saxon and German traditional culture. The founding fathers rejected this legal system. They wanted the U.S. to be more like Rome. They wanted a system where elected representatives were the ones who created the law. Or or did they? Well, on June 7th, 1965, the court announced that they had sided with Griswold. It was 7-2. to two. Let's talk about the real reason that Griswold won. We all know that Joe Biden wants to pack the court. That would allow him to push his fascist agenda with no opposition. His new judges will just rubber stamp whatever he wants to do with no regard to the Constitution or the law. We also know that FDR tried to do the same thing. Of course, FDR failed, right? This is one of the biggest lies in American history. That FDR didn't end up packing the court. Sure, FDR didn't add more than nine judges to the court at any given time. However, by becoming dictator and serving four consecutive terms as president, he absolutely did pack the court. By the time FDR died, eight of the nine Supreme Court justices had been appointed by him. At that point, the judges would rubber stamp pretty much anything that progressives presented to them. Even stuff that was obviously frivolous or ridiculous like Griswold v. Connecticut. And guess what? They brought up the Ninth Amendment. They also brought up that the right to privacy was inherent in the First, Third, Fourth, and Fifth Amendments and said that the Due Process Clause of the Fourteenth Amendment should be applied to incorporate Bill of Rights protections to the state Therefore, the Connecticut law banning birth control was unconstitutional. So Mr. Beats is me started this whole thing off mocking birth control laws. 
silly P.T. Barnum and his belief in Christianity. Can you believe that people actually supported these laws? They must have not even believed in science! At the same time though, Mr. Beast's me seems to put an awful lot of faith in the secret right to privacy in the Constitution. Is that based off science, Mr. Beats's meat? Did you use the science to find that secret constitutional right? I'm not gonna lie here. I'm getting a real feels not real sort of vibe from this whole thing. Sure, you can say Christianity is mere superstition. Therefore, you can argue that we shouldn't use it as a pretext to ban contraceptives. I'd say that at least Christianity is rooted in tradition though. For thousands of years, people have turned to it as a source of wisdom. That being said, the constitutional right to marital privacy is just as superstitious. Yet it's rooted in nothing. Nothing but nihilism. It was just made up by judges. Now you might say, who cares? Birth control is not a big deal. Well, there's a reason that this guy chose this case to do a video on. This opened up the floodgates. Coastal elites could use this case to push whatever degenerate agenda they wanted on the rest of the country. This case was used to force abortion on demand. It forced us to accept sodomy and later gay marriage. Justice Gorsuch then cited it in order to create a federal right to be transgendered. In the future, they'll probably order mandatory puberty blockers for our children. When they do this, they'll cite to Griswold v. Connecticut. Again, privacy is not explicitly listed in the Constitution. However, it's one on which several other rights, including expression, for example, depend. How does freedom of expression depend on marital privacy? You can clearly express yourself on Facebook, of course, unless you're a conservative. I wouldn't say that you have any privacy on there, though. Expression has nothing to do with privacy. This is all just a cope. Also, the court concluded that privacy specifically within marriage was a personal zone that should totally be off limits to the government. Justice William Douglas wrote the opinion, quote, Would we allow the police to search the sacred precincts of marital bedrooms for telltale signs of the use of contraceptives? The very idea is repulsive to the notions of privacy surrounding the marriage relationship, unquote. Yet there are numerous court decisions allowing police to search bedrooms. They can search for drugs for evidence of violent crime. Police can search bedrooms in order to recover stolen property. Phones can be wiretapped. To act like it would be absurd for police to search the, quote, marital bedroom is ridiculous. Yet another cope. Look, you made up some fake constitutional right. Don't pretend like this is just common sense when it clearly isn't. The two dissenting justices, Hugo Black and Potter Stewart, just thought that finding privacy in the Constitution was too loose of an interpretation. Regardless, Griswold v. Connecticut is a landmark case that basically gave Americans the right to privacy. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. Except that it didn't. We live in a mass surveillance state. People are constantly being monitored and censored. Our system is every bit as authoritarian as communist China. In fact, our country is likely being run by communist China. The idea that we have any sort of right to privacy is ridiculous. What we do have is a very limited right to marital privacy that the only thing it gets us is the right to buy condoms and birth control pills. A right that was very narrowly tailored to only benefit neoliberal elites. In any other context, we have no right to privacy. So many cases afterward, including the more famous case Roe v. Wade, cited Griswold afterward as justification to expand or defend privacy. How does Roe v. Wade expand privacy? You're wrong. What it does do is force every single state to allow women to kill their children. Let's look at the Ninth Amendment again. Couldn't I argue that one of these secret, unenumerated rights is the right to a fetus to be able to live and become a person? It's implied by, gee, I don't know, maybe be the right to life that's listed in the 14th amendment when anyone can make up any right that supports whatever agenda they want it just leads to nihilism and that's the legacy of griswold versus connecticut nihilism the ability of the coastal elite to force the rest of the country to do whatever they want it's the reason why what goes on in the bedroom stays in the bedroom and marked a big shift away from more traditional views on birth control. And remember, today privacy is constantly under threat due to technology and mass surveillance, so it's important to remember just how relevant this case still is. Well, if it was so relevant, then why is this? Why didn't the so-called right to privacy protect us from mass surveillance? It didn't because it's not and was never intended to be an actual right. Allowing people to put a 
a pee pee and a poo poo is not a robust privacy protection. Unless you're just some complete blithering idiot. Someone who just puts blind faith in the system. A person who's entirely oblivious to the fact that they're being manipulated by elite propaganda. So pathetically gaslit that they celebrate and parrot the propaganda by making these stupid videos. I'll see you for the next Supreme Court case, jury. Hey, boys and girls, please watch my next propaganda video. Yeah, no thanks. Why don't you go beat your meat by yourself and leave them kids alone? If you like this video, please support small YouTube channels like mine by subscribing. Thanks.